that's where they're going to mark it in. There were a lot of missed tackles over there on that running back Ellis that time. So Missouri huddles at the 20 with eight seconds left. They apparently are not going to go for the field goal. They're going to go for all the marbles. They're not going to go for the tie. Here they are up over the football at the 12 on first down. And the quarterback Bradley rolling out. He's under a rush. He got the pass away incomplete. The pass is incomplete with three seconds. It stops the clock. The clock stopped with three seconds. Bradley's shaken up again and he gets up off the ground. Three seconds left on the clock. Time for another Missouri play. The ball is actually closer to the 11 than the 12. Missouri has called for timeout. And that, I believe, is their last time out of the ball game. But what difference does it make? Because only three seconds remain on the clock. Kent, this is without a doubt one of the wildest ones I've ever sat in on in my life. 23 to 20, Nebraska leads with three seconds left. Well, the question now, do you go for the field goal for the tie? 23-20. The ball is marked on the left pass mark, so the field goal kicker, Brockhouse or Varelli, would have an angle. It would not be straight out. All at the 11-yard line, and of course, uh, how far would they mark it back if they went for the field goal, Lyle? About the 18-19, uh, that would make it a 28, 29, 30-yard field goal if they went for it. Yeah, he would uh, he would spot the ball probably at about the 17-yard line. But it looks like uh, they're going to go angle. for it. Oh, I think they'll go for because it. Because Bradley's talking to Warren Powers right now. Boy. I think definitely they're going to go for it with three seconds left to play. They're going after the victory. And this crowd, needless to say, is on its feet. 73 to 74,000 strong, along with everybody in this broadcast booth. And I'll tell you, I've never seen anything like it. For wildness, this has had everything in the world in this game. And we're about ready to play football again, and Bradley has been over-talking to the Missouri coaches. And he's going to uh, go in there and call another one, Ken. Tom Osborne said Phil Bradley is a big game player. He has played big in this big game. Let's see what he does on this big play. Well, he's a great athlete, and he can make the big plays for you. So Missouri breaks the huddle and comes over the ball. And here it is, three seconds to go, the last shot. And so Missouri, with Bradley dropping straight back to throw, he's under a rush, and they got him! They got him! They blitzed him and got him. Derry Nelson got him. From Fairmont, Nebraska, Derry Nelson got him and slammed him to the ground. And the Nebraska players are jumping all over each other down there. And they have ganged up on Derry Nelson. They've got him down in a heap at the 14-yard line, all the way to the other end of the field. Derry Nelson blitzing from the right side hit Bradley from behind before he could find anybody to throw to, and the ball game is all over. Nebraska has won a shootout like you can't believe, and John Melton has got to be just coming unglued behind us. He'll be along to talk about it in one of the wildest football games you're ever going to see. And what a day. What a wild ball game. And I'll tell you, you just got to take your hat off to those Nebraska kids who did not lose their cool for sure. after they gave up that fluke touchdown on that kickoff. They did not panic. They did not get excited. They stayed cool and ran it at them.